So let's say you've got a coding interview coming up in 14 days. We're delighted to invite you to the first round interview at Netflix. Oh uh, yes, yes, that time is fine, yes. And for some reason, so. the interviewer decides that... And one more thing, we require all our candidates to have our interviews in Java. But you've never coded in Java before in your life. Why is it public static void? Why are there all these like word things? On? So basically, you've left with no other joys apart from to give up. I guess I'll have to call them back to cancel. Bro, you can absolutely become decently competent in any programming language in just 14 days. And I know that because I did it myself using Java. So in this video, I will tell you exactly how you can do that too, including the principles I apply to learn efficiently, the resources I use, the exact step-by-step -step I use to learn Java this quickly, as well as some concluding thoughts around programming languages and how you, learning a new language is actually a lot easier than you think once you know what you're doing. And before I get all the comments of like, ah, oh, you're lying, there's no way you could learn a programming language in 14 days. I'm not claiming that I became a world-class expert in Java in 14 days. What I'm just saying is that within 14 days, I went from pretty much having no knowledge of Java to being able to function as a junior developer at an actual company in an actual project doing actual work coding stuff. Obviously, I'm not an expert yet. I still have a long way to go. But what I want to get across in this video is that provided that you already know one programming language, there are some very simple steps that you can take to transform that knowledge into any language that you want to learn. So here's how I did that. What you do need is knowledge of fundamental programming concepts like loops, variables, etc. in essentially in other programming language. Learning these basic concepts is sort of separate from mastering a specific programming language as they simply apply to any language really in pretty much the same ways. It's like learning the language of logic. So I started my current job around two months ago and I joined my first project after my training around one month ago. Uh, and I was placed in a team where we are essentially working on a Java based suite of microservices. And at this point, I had only done a very minimal amount of Java in my life, but basically I didn't know any of the language. So while this wasn't required and the people understood that I was new to Java, I nevertheless decided to see how fluent could I come in Java before my project was going to start, which was around two weeks from when I found out. And here is exactly how I did that. As a first step, for all the new devs joining my company, they gave us sort of a mini coding bootcamp before we were actually placed into our projects. One week of this mini bootcamp was around Java. So I was able to essentially learn the basics through that. And that is also, unsurprisingly, the first step of learning a programming language in 40 days learn the basics. What you want to do is take up some basic exercises like basic lead code problems for example or any coding problems you'll find in any decent basic course on that language. So what I would actually recommend is just pick up any basic course on that new language and just do all the boring starter coding exercises that they'll give you. Because while from a logic perspective all these basic exercises like using loops and all of that might be something that you already know how to do, it's important to just get a lot of reps in so to speak in just using your new language. This is a very boring part because you're essentially writing up a lot of stuff that's really not challenging you from a problem solving perspective, but it's getting the syntax of the new language into your muscle memory. That's how your brain actually works. You're just putting in a lot of reps. The process of using that language then becomes automatic so that you, when you use it again, you no longer have to try to you know, think hard to do it because it's just automatic. For the first few days, we were going through some basic algorithms and whatnot. I had already written a million times in Python and JavaScript, but nevertheless, I did the boring reps to get the Java syntax into my muscle memory. And at the same time as to do this even faster, I also picked up a basic Udemy Java course to get even more reps in. I was Googling a lot. It was frustrating to not know these basic things like initializing mutable arrays, but it was the necessary boring work that simply just had to be done in order to move on to step two. But before we talk about that, I have something very exciting to tell you about remote work. So as you're probably aware, 
the world is going more and more towards remote working. Like literally, it's Thursday right now and I have not gone to the office once this week. And that's great. But the downside is that the tools that we have to do remote work are really not quite there yet to make the experience just as good as being face to face would be. And that is why I'm super excited to talk about Spatial Chat who are kindly sponsoring this video. Special Chat is essentially a virtual co-working platform. Think of it like a digital office. When you work with your team inside Special Chat, you essentially have three rooms. The workplace to focus on projects and boost team collaboration, the stage to deliver presentations, and the breakout for basically socializing and networking. When you wanna work together with your team, all of you will be in the workplace room, centered around a Zoomable canvas, where you can do a bunch of cool things like use and record multiple simultaneous whiteboards, see what your teammates are doing in real time, and interact with tools like Notion, Miro, VS Code, Trello, or whatever your team likes to use. I think what Spatial Chat have created really has the potential to boost productivity while actually making the process of remote working enjoyable rather than a chore. I honestly hope that my company would adopt Spatial Chat. So if you're a project or a product team, I highly recommend you check out Spatial Chat 3.0 from the link down below in the description. Thank you for Spatial Chat for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video. So step two is to learn about how the language actually works at a slightly more sort of, I would, I would say advanced, but like an intermediate level. What I mean by this is that you want to become familiar with how that language is constructed, how it is run on a computer and things like that. In the case of Java, I learned about concepts like the Java virtual machine or, or that everything in Java is an object. Essentially, anything that confuses you or anything that you see like, huh, oh, that's different to how I'm used to doing this in Python. I wonder why that is. Whenever you feel that, just look things up because the more you look things up, the more you'll start to understand the language. You have to be at least somewhat curious. This is again, just a general principle to learn anything. You have to want to learn things and to always go a slightly deeper than might be required because that is actually what makes you ahead of other people. That makes you better than other people because at any given stage, so I would just go and write down into my Notion notes any things I was curious about or that I just couldn't quite fully understand. And then later on, read as many articles and different stuff to like really understand everything that I came across in Java that I didn't fully understand. Because I always believe that down the line, you'll always be rewarded for having this more fundamental knowledge. So in summary, be curious and look up everything that you don't know until you understand it and until doing the basic actions becomes automatic. Step number three is to use a good IDE. This might sound like a sort of a strange tip. How can using one code editor or IDE help me learn a language faster than using another code editor? Well, in the past, the IDE I always used was VS Code. That's what I'm used to, and I still like it. So I was sort of annoyed when they told us in that bootcamp that we were gonna be using something called IntelliJ because I hadn't used it before. But it turns out I'm really glad we did because IntelliJ is essentially really optimized for Java and has a lot of tools and a lot of help with documentation that makes writing Java easier. And you actually want to be careful with a lot of these like automated tools that IDEs provide to you because in the beginning, you actually don't want to you be using your ID as a crutch too much because you wanna get used to doing these basic things manually as well. But the way a good ID specifically will save you time, if you're using an ID that has a lot of these features, you know when you hover over a piece of code or a class or a function or something like that, and it shows what that function does and sort of with a snippet of the documentation. That is probably the best tool you have to get familiar with different methods, classes, functions that the function provides, which makes you more likely to end up learning these things when you don't have to externally go and Google everything every single day. But at this point, we do have to talk about the unavoidable step four, which is that if you want to actually learn a programming language in 40 days, even if you already know another language, you do have to put in a lot of time, a lot of hours during those 14 days. To be honest, for most people, I, I, would like, I wouldn't actually recommend trying to learn a language in 14 days. There's really no reason to do that unless you're a complete nerd weirdo like I am. 
what I would actually suggest you do is just set a more reasonable target, like 30 days or like two months or something like that. But if you do want to achieve learning a new programming language in 14 days, it is just unavoidable that you're gonna have to put in a lot of hours. During those 14 days, I was working for the full nine to five that I was working for my bootcamp. But even after that, from like five till nine, I then kept on learning. So that is something that should probably be obvious, but just to not give any false expectations, I feel like it needs to be set. And finally, as a bit of a more advanced step five, I would highly recommend that you actually go out and learn some fundamental computer science concepts, specifically around computer architecture and how programming languages actually work in general at a low level and how a programming language actually uh, interacts with the computer hardware. I did a course called Nando Tetris, which you can go and order for completely free on Coursera. I'll leave an affiliate link down below. During that course, probably the single thing that's helped me the most in actually understanding what happens when you run a program, like when you write a program, how is it possible that uh, a computer can understand all of these words? Because essentially what you are writing is like text. This is not something that you should focus on at the first stage, but at some point, I highly recommend that you do go out and learn these sort of fundamental details because I always believe that the more you know, the better you'll be. And in this industry, because it is competitive, the people who have that fundamental CS knowledge are always going to have an edge. This also actually brings me to the most important point of this video, which is that the real reason why I was able to learn Java in 14 days is because I really didn't learn another language at all. Even though we call Python, JavaScript and all these different programming languages languages, in my opinion, they really aren't languages at all. They're really just different dialects of the same language. Like pretty much every single programming language implements the same exact logic. If you learn one programming language, learning another one is easy because you're really not learning another. This is not like learning human languages. Anyone who's learned a new human language or someone who's learned like four human languages like I have knows that learning another human language is really hard because their rules are just completely different, the grammar is different, the, the words are just so different that this is not the choice but to just keep memorizing a bunch of different stuff and just keep repeating, repeating, repeating. Not, that, not to say that it can't be done, but it's much more difficult. Whereas with programming languages, it's not like that at all. If you learn Python, if you learn the core programming logic of Python, you'll be able to apply the exact same logic into learning Java or JavaScript or PHP or whatever language you wanna learn. That's simply not the case with human languages. So what I want to, you to take away from this video is that if you're worried about like choosing the wrong programming language to learn or something like that, don't be. Because whichever language you learn, you're really just learning the same language the language of programming logic. Once you're good at the language of programming logic, you can then just translate that same knowledge into any language you want. Companies realize that if you're a good programmer in any language, it's trivial for you to just learn whatever language they choose on the job. So it really doesn't matter that much which language you choose. And that is why I was able to learn Java in 40 days. And so if you don't feel like you quite yet masters this programming language of logic, or you're not yet quite sure that you are a good enough programmer yet, I actually made just the right course for you. I actually created a Skillshare class where I go through all the principles that I myself have applied in this Skillshare class. I go into a lot more detail that I ever can in any of these YouTube videos. And the great thing is if you go down below and you get a free trial of Skillshare, you can actually complete my class. It's not that long. Like you can complete that class with your free trial, the first ever class or course I've ever created. So do let me know what you think about it. If you want a sort of a more condensed version of how you can actually learn this programming language logic and how I did it. I also made just the right video for you, which is this one right here. I go through step by step all the mistakes I made when I was beginning and how I resolved them and how I was able to learn my first programming language. So if that's something that's interesting to you, Go watch that video right now and I will see you next time.